All right, all right. Happy Thursday, everybody. We are so excited to be here. We're going to give just a moment to for people to hop on and join us on today's call. So excited to have Heather Reed here today. Yay! <laughs> Day. Happy Thursday, Heather. How are you feeling? Good, good. How are you? I'm feeling good. Today is a good day. Yesterday was not the best day, but today, <laughs> <laughs> yesterday today is a better good. day. I felt everything yeah. yesterday. I felt the weight of everything. I'm still grieving my friend who passed away. Um, I uh. felt the weight of single parenting. I felt the weight of virtual school. I felt the weight of business. I felt, I just felt the weight of everything thing yesterday and I just yeah. boo hooed and just was like I just it was overdue <laughs> it was yeah. it was yeah. overdue for a cry day honestly um but today's been a good day so good I'm good glad that we are both excited to be here tonight so yeah I only have one scripted question for you Heather everything else people I, I get I continue to get asked the question do I prepare questions for my amazing guests and I do yeah. not only yeah. the intro question because you guys right. are just that awesome. I don't have to prep you guys. You know your <laughs> stuff. You know right. your subject. And I think that's the other beautiful part is that you willfully come on, right? Yeah. With a topic. Like you say, so one of this is this is what I have in mind. And even if you decide right. to tweak it, it's like it's yours. You you know it and we've we've conversed. So I trust you with the subject. We 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 share the same, you know, energy and intent that we want the best, not just for us in business, but for the people that we aspire to. Serve. So for thank sure. you so much, Heather, for being yeah. on tonight. You're in Georgia Eastern time anyway. It's night. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Early or late afternoon here in Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you the scripted question. And okay. then I want you to introduce yourself. I've said your name a thousand times, but I want you to let the people know who you are. And then we're going to get right on into the conversation. How does that sound? That sounds perfect. All right, Heather. So when you hear the word, transcend what comes to mind okay so when you mentioned that this was your question i was like oh so many things so i wanted to look at some definitions so the one that really resonated with me was um to what's that i said i'm writing it down too <laughs> okay the one that resonated was to outdo or exceed in excellence elevation extent degree etc so wow. Yeah. So when I thought about that, I was really like, that's really what I strive to do is, you know, there are a lot of sleep coaches out there, but my goal is really to set myself apart in the level of service that I give to my clients yes. and the level of confidence that they have after we wrap up our time together going forward with their babies and sleep. So oh. that is kind of what spoke to me. That is beautiful. That is yeah. really beautiful. I'm going to play that back so that I can. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> that, that is really an enriching perspective that you shared. And I love how you know your differentiator. Yeah. That, that's for another live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but how you knowing your differentiator is so special, is so important. And I have no doubt is why you stay booked and productive. Yeah. I'm not going to say booked and busy. You stay booked and productive because you know the value you bring. And hey, Ananya, hi, Monique. Hi, Carol. Thank you for joining us tonight. We're so excited mm -hmm. to see you all here. So tell us about you. You gave us a brief, a brief walk into it. So go ahead and walk us into you, yeah. Heather. So my name is Heather. As you've already said, I'm a certified pediatric sleep coach. And I'm a mom of two. I have an 11, well, in four days, she'll be 11, an 11 year old and an almost two year old in okay. like a month and a half, he'll be two. Mm -hmm. And I became a pediatric sleep coach after my own challenges with sleep for both of my kids. Wow. Um, I felt the sleep deprivation. I felt the massive impacts that it had. Mm -hmm. And then I felt the transformation after we worked with a sleep coach uh -huh. of just what a major, major difference sleep makes in your life, in your transition as a new mom, yes. all of it. It's such a dramatic 
life-changing thing when you go from severe sleep deprivation to finally getting the rest you need. So yes, that's why I became a sleep coach. I really wanted to change the postpartum experience for moms in that mm-hmm. way and help them to enjoy their babies and um, and really not struggle every single day so that they can enjoy their babies. Oh, that is so good. Yeah. Now, you shared something very transparent and I appreciate that that you got into your business because of your own struggles, right? Right. Because I know when we first met, I think I literally said, I didn't even know this was a thing, right? I was like, there is sleep comfort. If only six years ago. (laughs) If only I had known, right? Like things would be different. And granted, I feel like parenting when she was an infant was so much easier than it is now. Like I know, you know, moms be like, oh my God, this every two, especially those that are nursing. But in general, like, you know, the every, the cat naps and the every two hours. And I'm like, that's when momming was easy for me. Yeah. This six-year-old mommy. And I know, mm. I know parents of older, you know, you said you got an 11 year old, you know, every age comes with its own challenges. Right. Right. And it's, and its sure. own blessings as well. But I'm like, this this is complicated because she's got she's got a mind of her own and she's talking and she, you know like, <laughs> <Have> opinions. <laughs> and, 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 and she got it honest. Between her father and I, she got it honest. And so it's like, you know, when she was a baby, you just put him down in the bouncer or the swing and you just go do your thing. You know what I mean? You come back and you yes. look and you guys work together and like, but now it's like I like, totally relate to that. Earlier on to help with right. the whole sleep practice now right let's 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 talk about so you got into your business because of your own struggles and what what was really the the kick what was really like i've got to do something about about the lack of sleep um so he was a baby that struggled with food intolerances Mm. from the very beginning so you hear about babies like in the first couple of weeks they just sleep all the time that was never him he was always really struggling with sleep both naps and nighttime and it got to the point where we were baby wearing him for every single nap throughout the day so my feet and my back and like it was horrible um and then he was up every one to two hours at night like just could not stay asleep at night um, because he was so uncomfortable and then in the course of that not knowing what was going on we implemented a bunch of habits mm-hmm. that weren't habits that we wanted to recreate uh-huh. for later. And so then it was really a matter of like, we've got to figure something out to break these habits because okay. I was terrified of bed sharing and co-sleeping in that way. Mm-hmm. And he was in our bed. And I remember one morning or middle of the night or at some point waking up and there was a blanket over him. And oh, I feel. was like, this is not okay. Right. And I knew the risks, right? Yeah. Like I knew yeah. the safety risks, but I was so sleep deprived and I didn't know what else to do. Yeah. And I had reached out to a sleep coach when he was three months old. And I was told that there was nothing that she could do until he was um, at least five months old. And when yeah. you're in it and you're so exhausted and someone says that to you, I just yeah. burst into tears. Like I yeah. cannot do this for another eight weeks like it felt like forever wow. and um so a big part of my mission is wanting to help moms through the newborn period too mm-hmm. because those newborn days are so hard and there's no like sleep training as a newborn but there are yeah. things you can do to encourage healthy sleep habits mm-hmm. and lay a great foundation of healthy sleep habits at the, uh-huh. that stage um and so when he was four months old, our pediatrician gave us the, the all clear to sleep coach. And I messaged that sleep coach back and I was like, so I know you said five months, but you're either in or you're out. And right. <laughs> shoot. we've got clearance. I'm like we're done. <laughs> we're, I'm so tired. Okay. Look, medical clearance. I don't, there, there's nothing to discuss, but go for right. it. <laughs> On the other part of it, too, is that I went back to work after three months and my husband was home on paternity leave and he has a worse back than I do. And for him to be baby wearing throughout the day was brutal. And so a big part of it was like, we've got to make this better for his paternity leave so that he's not in pain every day, all day. So that was another part of it for us. Okay. And so 
at what point, so you went through sleep, you went to, so here's another part that I love. You experienced sleep coach, right? Yes. A sleep coaching journey, if you will, yes. before you provided sleep coaching journey. Yes. Yeah. How did your sleep coaching experience, what, what, what you're willing to share, right? Positive or not. <laughs> how yeah. did your sleep coaching experience get that fire lit in you to say, I've now got to do this because it was so significant one way or the other. You yeah, it. it was a, I mean, it was a good experience in the sense that we learned a lot uh -huh. about sleep um, and we got him on a good path with sleep. Mm -hmm. But I also learned some things that I wanted to implement in my business yes. that I wanted to do a little bit differently because for example, one of the things that happened was he got sick on the last day of our contracted work together. Aww. And when a baby gets sick, most people know it throws everything into chaos everything. again, right? So again, he wasn't sleeping well. And I'm like, are you serious? And now what do we do? And so I work with my clients to set them up so that they know the principles and the foundation so that if that happens, they know exactly what to do to get right back on track. Yeah. And it's not a matter of feeling like that time was wasted. Yeah. So I don't just want to set you up for sleep right now. I want to set you up for sleep success for the long haul. You know what that reminds me of? Um, the Dave Ramsey, his financial okay. program, right? So the similarity in it is the pause. A lot of People have the mindset that when something chaotic happens, right? Because it doesn't go as planned. And this, this is my project manager hat is on now, <laughs> right? You have a plan. We all have a plan. But then something right. comes and derails the plan. No matter how much we prepared, we tried to mitigate it, we, we anticipated, we had a plan. And then right. something came and just wrecked the plan. And right. then we feel like it's over. Right. It's completely over. Right. But that's not true. There's a pause. It's a pause because if you're totally committed to the outcome that you desire, it's not over. You now have to find an alternate path, right? Right. And and that's what you're saying. You don't completely give up on the plan. Right. You pause, level set, right? Get the baby back healthy. Get the baby get healthy. Back yep. Up where we left. Exactly. The plan. I love that. That has got to be so empowering for your clients. Yes. I mean, I, I sure hope so. Um, cause I think that they feel this, uh, pressure to like, okay, now I've learned this new way and I've got to keep doing it this way always. And so a big part of it is like when your baby's sick, they need different things than when they are well. And when they're yeah. sick, they need your comfort and they need a little extra love in. Right. And yeah. so, give them that and that's okay. And they will get back to good sleep once you go back to the plan that we had implemented before. Yes, and, and we've got some, some really good comments, Heather. Carol is saying very interesting info. Heather is like, yeah, not Heather. Actually, Heather, the other Heather, hey, <laughs> I see it. She's good. You're going to be on next week. Um, honey is saying she loves us both. Amazing super moms. Thank you all so much. We adore you too. This is so good. So, oh, so let's talk fun. more about, this is so fun. So let's talk more about, all right, you got the plan. Baby gets sick. Calls. It's not over. Don't freak out. Focus Don't on the priority out. at the moment. Let's get, let's get everyone and everything back to hell because we all know. When the child gets sick, guess who gets sick next? Sick next. <laughs> if it's not the other sibling, <laughs> it's the mom or the the other parent, right? The dad, the, the, the dad of right. the other parent, and on your household. So we get everybody back to health, and then what do you find happens? And then you know they get right back on track. What I do is I lay out a very specific plan for each family yes. in a document that they have forever, so they know what to go back to. And if they're like, I'm not quite sure how we did this, which most of them don't forget. But if they need a refresher, they have that document forever that they can go back to, to figure it out. So they walk away with something tangible. Yes. You're yeah, they walk away with a few things. 
It's not just words. Right. It's not just uppity, uppity. Right. It's all going to be okay. Pat your baby on the back, flip him over two times, throw it on the left side, give him warm <laughs> milk and water and keep it moving. That's not your coaching. No. You have actual reference, referential documents that your, your families can go back to beyond their time with you. Right. Right. And then I'm also here, right? So like I've had families come back on occasion that they're like, we have this one little thing and, you know, a quick email from a client is not something that I ignore. So yeah. I'll get back to you with answers to, yeah. you know, those, those what if questions. Like I had one family that was going to a wedding and she's like, how should I handle sleep knowing this scenario? And she kind of laid it out. Yeah. So I just gave her a quick answer. And then she felt confident about that unique situation that she was going to experience that is so good you are there you are there walking the journey with them you're not just you know scooping up their investments and saying here's your training vault carry on <laughs> yes right, right? Exactly. you're walking the journey with them which makes it a really exclusive experience it makes it a really intentional experience and it really helps the parents with all of their their different needs because as parents we know every child is every child every pregnancy every parenting experience it, it's just you know there yeah. are commonalities right but right. there are some subjective things that come up and you're there to answer them I yeah and that. i say that to parents too because there are stock sleep what i call stock sleep plans out there where you can go to one of these various coaches and you can click purchase and then you get it a sleep plan from them. That's the same sleep plan that goes out to everybody. everybody. But I have clients who need help implementing, teaching their kids independent sleep. I also had a client recently that like she had done all those pre-done courses or whatever for sleep, right? Yeah. She tried a specific sleep plan. She tried a certain book. She was a nurse. You know, she's like, I know all the things I'm supposed to be doing and it's not working. And it honestly, Tawana, it was shifting his schedule by like 10 minute increments in one way or the other. And it fixed it. Wow. So it's everything from, you know, having a certain method to teach them falling asleep independently to just sometimes it's a schedule tweak. Do we just have to find the right, you know, schedule for them? And then they sleep really well. So, um, there is a place for the one size fits all sleep plan, but the clients that come to me are the ones who really are looking for a personalized, individualized plan and my daily feedback to implement that plan. That's beautiful. Now let's let's yeah. segue because you and I got a chance to converse a little bit before the live. Huh? Sorry, you guys don't hear that part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we got to converse just a little bit before. Oh, Monique said you are an amazing sleep coach. And you're doing oh. amazingly well in your business. Thank you, Thank so you much Moni. For the love. Community over competition hashtag. Maria taught us that last week, and I, I just I've been I've been living on that thing. I'm like, yes, collaboration, collaboration, more collaboration, because we alone can't yes. do it all, right? That people people right. need us, and there are a lot of us out there that do our thing, and they it's like music, right? There's some there's something right. for everybody. We aren't for everybody. But there is someone exactly there, right. So I love that. Right, Monique. that is so sweet. Because um, Monique is also people are like, what's the big deal? Monique is also a sleep coach, and so the fact that she's here supporting Heather today and 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 transcending bootstrap dreams is just beautiful to me. It's very. Oh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to do it. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> we're going to segue into the conversation that you and I got started with about the the mom. Right. And this experience is hybrid living experience. No, we're not going to stop talking about it because COVID is still here and we're all still living in it. Right. We're still those of Oof. us that are breathing. We're blessed to still be here. We are still dealing with it and we can't forsake how it's affecting people. So talk yeah. about that, Heather, about how, you know, us as women, particularly, we take on that super woman role and we've got to do yeah. all the things all the work all right. the mom all the house all the and it absolutely adversely affects everything including our parenting our parenting habits our sleep and of course our children's sleep <laughs> yeah yeah Let's talk about that i feel like there's this unspoken 
belief amongst a lot of moms that they just have to be the martyr in their household, that they shouldn't get enough sleep because they're the mom, or when they can't get enough done in their day, the sleep is the thing that goes. Mm -hmm. And I've heard moms talk about like, they're only this little for so long. So I'll just be sleep deprived for the next five years, Ooh, you know, like that hurts. <laughs> I know, I know. And that always crushes my heart because you don't have to struggle day in and day out. Yeah. There is a way to take care of yourself, which in turn takes care of your child. Yeah. And I think it's so important to remember that. Um, I looked up some statistics in advance of talking with you, mm -hmm. and wow. it's estimated that one in three Americans do not get sufficient sleep every night. They are getting mm -hmm. six hours or less of sleep on a daily basis, which one thing that's interesting about sleep is that when you're not getting enough sleep like that, you start to accumulate a sleep debt. It's like a bank account. So you're mm -hmm. constantly pulling out of this bank account, and now you're a deficit, right? And now that is impacting your life in a large number of ways. Everything from your health to your memory to your cognitive function and reaction time and your ability to focus and be a great employee or if you're self-employed, the ability to come up with creative ideas. Um, all of those things get impacted. So I don't know if you've ever heard this, Tawana, that driving while sleep deprived is the equivalent of driving while impaired, like alcohol impaired. Yes, I have. So I have. after 18 hours of no sleep, it's like driving with a 0.05 blood alcohol level. And after 24 hours of no sleep, it's like driving with a 0.1 alcohol level, which is legally drunk. And so if you're chronically exhausted, mm -hmm. you can just imagine it's like being drunk and driving on a regular basis. And oftentimes people have their kids in the car. Um, one in three drivers says that they've nodded off while driving before. Yes. Like that's really scary when yes. you think about it. Yes. So when we talk about wanting to be great moms and wanting to be great at our jobs and wanting to be great wives, like one of the most important things that you can do is to get good sleep because you are less prone to anxiety and depression. You are less yes. prone to anger. Like if you're a person that gets angry when you're sleep deprived, that's me. Yes. Like, what do you call that? You know, so angry? Because when you're hungry, you're hungry when you're sleeping. <laughs> you're sleeping. You'll have more patience and more energy to play and interact with your kids. Yeah. And when your kids are getting the sleep that they need, there are also benefits for them in terms of the ability to practice milestones and, um, and learn at an appropriate age and level. And also kids that are chronically sleep deprived are also at higher risk for certain mm -hmm. health issues as they get older, namely, you know, obesity, heart disease, diabetes, because your hormones, cortisol is the hormone that spikes when you aren't getting enough sleep. And cortisol mm. is what makes you hang on to fat, right? Mm. So it all kind of ties together. And so when I hear people say, well, I'm sacrificing my sleep for my kids, it's, it's almost the opposite of what it should be, right? Like we should be making sure everyone's getting sleep so that your kids start off on a healthy foot. Now, if you will, explain to me a little bit or give me some kind of some benchmarks to help us parents out here. What is chronic sleep deprivation for children? Like what is what is that time frame defined as? So I can tell you what children should be having okay. in terms of the amount of sleep. So okay. Everyone's a little bit different. So we said like no two children are the same, no two people are the same, but in general, the range that you want to see your kids sleeping is between 10 and a half and 12 and a half hours at night. Wow. So some babies really love to sleep and they're the 12 and a halfers. Most of the babies that I work with fall somewhere in the like 11-ish range, 11, 11 and a half. 
Um, my son has always been on the lower side of that. So he's always been more like of a 10 and a half hour a night kid, mm -hmm. but that's what you want to target in terms of night sleep. And then day sleep changes dramatically from newborn phase through the first few years of life. So if people have specific questions about that, I'd be happy to answer them via message later. But yeah, babies need a lot of sleep. <laughs> they need a lot of sleep. And, and when chat, they're waking, if, go, go ahead. ahead. Finish your thought. I was just gonna say in the chat, if you if if you did not know that, send us a wave or something. Like let us know you you gained some knowledge in this in this moment that children should be having ten and a half to twelve hours of sleep in general, so that they do not have the potential to set up for chronic illnesses when they're older. That is mind blowing to me. Yeah. And that, that's so just to clarify, yeah, I just want to clarify that's for kids four and under. So I'm talking about the little ones, right? As uh -huh. they get older, they don't tend to need as much sleep, but my daughter still gets about 10 and a half hours of sleep at night and she's 11. She's so, 11. you know, wow. they need, they need their rest yeah. to really recuperate and for their brain you know, to do all the things it needs to do so that they're rested for the next day. That is so good. And, and, and that, and like, I mean, you know, when we think about ourselves as adults, we, we need our rest so our body can recoup and do different things. <laughs> yeah. And so they yeah. their body's still trying to figure out how to, how to be a human being. No doubt right. they need more sleep as well. So they, so it can all make sense. For their body well and the growing right the like growing. physically to grow your body wow. needs that time wow. to be asleep so that it can i mean to build itself sounds weird it's but it kind of yeah. <laughs> right? that yeah makes me think about um the movie i'm not even going to say the name of it but the, <laughs> the guy in the red suit and he's not he's not spider-man i'll say that <laughs> um Dead superman movie. No, Deadpool. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> like which one? <laughs> it makes me think. When you, when you think, like you know how the body has to grow. That that came to mind. Sorry, y'all. I went down a wormhole with that one, but I couldn't help but have that visual of his, his body growing, like grown man on top and little man on bottom. It was, it was so. Sh <laughs> but yeah, our bodies do a lot while we're sleeping, and we do take that for granted. We do, and I will say I do. I'll speak for myself. I often take that for granted because I, for some reason, I'm a night person. Yet yeah. my life is not conducive to being a night person in this right. season, particularly. Right. Right. I'm a mom. She's six. We've got to get up for school. We are doing virtual school. So yes, I am living with my decision. That's what resonated with me. Doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just because I feel like I'm doing the right thing doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. No, and I'm, every day I'm not totally happy. I do try to make my days as fun as I can make them with her. Um, she loves virtual school. So I'm like, heaven, heaven, I must be doing something right because she pops yeah. up every morning ready to log into Zoom. I mean, she's here for it. But yeah. I, I've, I've had to change my schedule because I'm like, I'm not getting enough sleep. I cannot continue to stay up at night and rise early and, and function a full day because she's home, right? I can't just go crash, take a nap when I want. Like that you'd right. be calling the people you'd be calling the people on me if i did those right. things so it's like being a responsible parent i've i've had to recognize heather i need more sleep yes and, it's been a hard and i did the same thing determined. too yeah i mean i relate to you so much in that way i'm such a night owl i used to get up at 5 30 every morning get my daughter ready out the door off to the corporate job home she's in bed and then after she would get in bed i would work generally from like eight o'clock at night until midnight, one, two in the morning, Easy. and then do it all over again. And I just, I just couldn't do it anymore. Right. Yeah. Like you reach a point where you're so exhausted. It just doesn't make sense. And you start feeling the health impacts of that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, especially since meeting my husband, he prioritizes sleep so much like that, that has been such a great influence on me because he's ready to go to bed at nine 30 at night. I'm like, okay, I, you know, <laughs> Yeah. I guess I should do that. I should be doing that too. And so it helps kind of um, motivate me to do the yeah. same and to try to get those at least adults you want somewhere between seven and nine hours of sleep at night. And I've heard people say like, I'm fine on five hours of sleep. And you might, 
feel fine after you drank all your coffee or your energy drinks, but like from a cognitive standpoint, you're not actually as good as you would be if you are getting enough sleep. And so, and I'm putting that up there, adults should be getting seven to, did I capture that right? Seven to nine hours? You did, right. yes. So now, how, what are some hows that we can accomplish this in all of our household differentiation, people? So take it in yeah. stride. <laughs> yes. Try it so for and you, pivot. <laughs> yeah. So for your kids, the first thing that I always want families to do is to establish a routine because kids thrive on routine and babies especially start to recognize the routine mm -hmm. and it starts to trigger their brains mm -hmm. to get ready for sleep. Okay. So establish a good nighttime routine. Um, you can start this at any age, but you definitely want to have a good routine in place between four and five months for infants. Okay. Um, you do all of the activities during that routine, mm -hmm. calming. So you don't want to have like a tickle war right at bedtime. It gets them all amped up again, right? Wow. And then um, keep lighting dim during okay. nighttime routines because melatonin is the hormone that helps to start um, feeling sleepy and to get your body to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And melatonin is very impacted by light. So the lack of light triggers melatonin production. So doing your bedtime routine in dim light mm -hmm. is really essential. Okay. The second thing that I recommend is your sleep environment. So we talk a lot about like behavioral aspects of sleep, uh -huh. but if your child doesn't have a great sleep environment, you can be doing all the behavioral things right. Mm. And they're still going to struggle falling asleep and staying asleep. So okay. what does this look like? You want the room dark. So for babies, they're too little to be afraid of the dark yet. Mm -hmm. So blackout dark, like if you can get blackout shades, make sure there's no night lights. We actually have a gap between my son's door and the floor that's like this big because there uh -huh. used to be carpet and they ripped out the carpet. And so now there's a gap. Uh -huh. um, we actually put a blanket right there to like prevent light from leaking wow. in. So um, darkness is really important. And then keep the temperature between 68 and 72 degrees. You'll find kind of what works for your baby. Um, but temperature can, for some babies, cause them to wake up. <clears throat> and then use a noise machine. So mm. for those people who aren't familiar, you can get noise machines for pretty inexpensive, like 20, 25 bucks. And um, you want them to be between 65 and 80 decibels in terms of volume that does not damage the ears, but it's enough to drown out extraneous noise mm -hmm. and to keep babies sleeping. You also want to keep it on a solid, consistent um, white noise sound. So there are some like waves crashing or birds chirping or whatnot. You just want it to be the solid, static white noise. Sometimes those um, those sounds actually wake them up when it's not just solid static. Okay. So good. And then my third tip is to know your baby's sleep EQ. So this is especially important in those early days where they're going to down for naps really frequently. Okay. There's some really common sleep EQs like fussiness and crying, right? Or rubbing the eyes. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we see that when they're already overly tired. Okay. So overtired. I use that with my daughter. Mommy is yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> let's cut it out now because mommy is overtired. Okay, back to the kids. Yeah. That's <laughs> funny. Um, so if you can identify what your baby's sleepy cues are before they get to the overtired place, sometimes it's kind of red rimmed eyes. Sometimes you'll even see red eyebrows, or um, they become less active. Yeah. So if they're normally, you know, kind of moving their arms and stuff around and they start to become more still or they're no longer making eye mm -hmm. contact, those are all signs that they're starting to sort of their brain starting to wind okay. down in preparation for falling asleep. And then if they stay awake too long and they're overtired, it's actually harder for them to fall asleep. So that's why it's so important to identify those cues and then get them down. These are three amazing tips that people can use and if you didn't catch them go back through i know i had a typo on a noise it's a noise two words not one but <laughs> yeah 
go back and, and, and catch, catch those cues and identify how you can put them into action in your environment so that you can get yourself, your baby. Again, we're talking about four, you know, zero to four. However, yeah. you might be able to try, depending on your child, you might be able to try some of these things. <laughs> some of these things work really well still, even with older kids. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and keep doing it. It's not a one night trick. It's right. A consistent thing, correct? Yes. So a lot of families that say they tried sleep training or whatnot, they actually, they try it for a night or two and then they feel like it's not working and they give up. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of being really consistent mm -hmm. over, you know, a week or two. Okay. Um, to start to see it like, oh, this is working. It will get better. There is actually a period in that two to three day window called an extinction burst where like they may react really well the first day or so. Mm -hmm. And then they realize like, oh, you're changing my routine. Like this is a thing now. And they actually protest harder. So you'll mm -hmm. see even worse. And that's where families tend to give up. And yeah. so I always warn my families, you might see it get worse, but if you can push through that, and get to the other side it will get better again on the other side of that and that's 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 like with with most things in life I'm not, yeah. not going to be so loose to say all things but that's like with most things in life like just when we feel like I can't I can't tolerate another moment of it whatever yeah. it is when we just push through right we just get yeah. over that 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 final breakdown yes <laughs> it's like yeah. bam everything just opens up. Everything just makes sense. Everything, you know, the stars get in alignment again and it, it happens for us. Right. So be encouraged, everybody. Be encouraged. Yes. I know I'm, I've been working at it. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, my daughter's six, but we have been working at this sleep thing and I have even shifted my, it was like, first it was like, let me get her on a sleep schedule so I can have more time to myself. <laughs> yeah. But now it's like, yeah, I need more rest too. Like that doesn't, don't, don't burn out. So thank you so right. much for these excellent excellent and practical tips heather what would be You're your welcome. closing message and then i want you to also share with us how you can access your information and all of the goodness that you have to share what is your closing message for us tonight my closing message is just don't forget to prioritize you you know your mental health your physical health your relationship with your spouse, those are all really important things. And one of the best pieces of advice that our pediatrician gave us when we were really struggling is she said, you know, the first few months, yes, it's all about baby. But at a certain point, that child needs to become a participating member of the family. And in our scenario, she's like, that means he needs to learn to sleep. You know, like the world cannot revolve around him forever. You're actually doing a disservice to your child when that's kind of the message that they get growing up. So it's not being a bad mom to prioritize yourself. You cannot fill someone else's cup when you have an empty cup. So say that one more take time. care of yourself. And, what's that? Say that one more time. I said you cannot fill someone else's cup when your cup is empty. You know, it's important to take care of yourself. and you know, it makes you a better mom and it makes you a better wife. And, you know, a big part of why I'm so passionate about this is because if you're not prioritizing yourself in your marriage, you know, now. that can lead to some destructive things for your family. Yeah. And, um, you know, I've been through divorce and it's awful. And, you know, sacrificing your well-being and your marriage well-being. Yes for your kid is actually not going to do your child a service, right? That's doing a disservice to your child as well. So yes. it all kind of ties in together. And I look at it really, you know, big picture in that way of how important sleep is for us. It's not just a matter of like, I'm feeling tired. Yes, that is so good. You hit, you listen, I'm sure some toes got a little crunched. I'm sure some nipples <laughs> got a little busted. But we are here for the better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We are here for the success. And that's what love is. It's about truth. And it's 
not what you say is how you say it. And you gave it to us in goodness. You gave it to us in listen, ladies, recognize yourself. Recognize your worth, recognize that your families need you, your customers need you, you know, the world right. needs you to be well right. so that you can do well for others. I love that. How can we find you, Heather? Let us yes. know how we can access you. So you can find me here on Facebook at Lil Snoozers. Um, that I also have a Facebook group where I share tips and just general kind of momming support. Um, and that is at Lil Snoozers Pediatric Sleep Support is the group. And then you can also find me at my website, which is just www.lilsnoozers.com. Awesome. I'm putting it out there. When we get off this live, please drop your links in the chat. That way, if okay. someone didn't catch it, they can go grab it go to it please join heather's group if this subject matter interests you invite people to heather's group if you know moms of littles again she specializes with age zero to four correct did i get that right yeah okay yep. <laughs> age zero to four if you are a mom if you are a parent if you know someone who's like i didn't even know this existed but this information right here if only i knew it then i want them to know it now Tap them into Heather as a resource so that they can be informed, enlightened, and have betterment, not only in parenthood, but for their own good as well. Thank you so much, Heather. Thank you. Uh, I hope it's not the last time that we yeah. get to have this conversation and talk some more in depth about it, because I'm sure we can break down these nuggets. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'd be happy to come back. <laughs> so it's an honor to have you back because this is something that um, just it's, it, it, it really isn't mentioned enough. And I will speak from a, from a minority and ethnic standpoint. Until I met you, I never heard of it, Heather. I yeah. never heard of sleep coaching, right? And it, maybe, it's, yeah. maybe it's just my little small circle. Maybe it's working. I don't know. But I, I'm so grateful to have this information. And I know I've been sharing your information um, with all my new moms that have been coming about. Yeah, we got a lot of COVID, COVID babies. <laughs> Yeah, COVID babies. COVID babies. And I've been sharing yeah. with them, you know, just, just join her group. You know, if you can do something with her now, great. If you can't, just join the group. Heather goes live. Heather drops nuggets. Heather drops workbooks, checklists. Get what you can <laughs> so you can get what you can, you know. So thank you so much. Thank yeah, you so much absolutely. Thank you. All right, everybody. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. Transcend with Bootstrap Dreams. So grateful to have you here. Please keep showing up. Next week, we will have Heather. I don't let me hold on, Heather. Heather Burt Rand. I always want to say something else. Heather Burt Rand is going to be coming on next Thursday night at 11 p.m. Eastern. And she's going to be talking about are your habits causing your chronic illness? Ooh, ooh. Let's That's get awesome. ready for it. Let's get ready for it. If you are a creative, if you are an entrepreneur, whether you are existing or aspiring, please hop on over to Facebook and join Results Driven Strategies for Creatives and Entrepreneurs. That's Bootstrap Dreams Facebook group where we talk about all things amazing as it becomes with entrepreneurship, right? We're here for everybody. We want the group to be conversational. It's not just about me talking about my thing. It's about us collectively going through the journey. So that's Result Driven Strategies for Creatives and Entrepreneurs Facebook group. Hop in there. We'll drop the link. Heather's going to drop her link in the chat. And we'll see you all next week. Transcend with Bootstrap <laughs> Dreams. Thank you all. Mm -hmm.